Well, welcome to another Cutting Edge show. I'm Omar Neal, one of your hosts. I'm the former mayor of Tuskegee, Alabama, as well as the host of the You Got the Power radio talk show. Well, today <clears throat> we're going to have a wonderful conversation today. Uh, we're going to be talking about our children. You know, as you know, COVID has taken a toll on adults. Can you imagine what it's done for our children? And so we're going to uh, engage in a conversation entitled Mad as Hell and Don't Know Why, addressing the mental health crisis with today's youth. We got a tremendous lineup today. We have Jacqueline Hicks, who is a mental health therapist. We have Sharon Scott, who is um, uh, the uh, MSW school-based therapist. We have Daryl Powell, who is executive director of the Alabama Council on Developmental Disabilities. And we have Roberta Taylor Jones, who is a crisis counselor, uh, all were with us today to discuss this most important subject. Now, you know, and when we're talking about young people in particular, and in particular, and, and I want to make this caveat. We are going to engage in some areas that may be uncomfortable. We're going to talk about things that may uh, create triggers for you as it relates to children. And so what I think we probably need to do is to let you know that if we are talking about something that may uh, be disturbing to you, to you because we're talking about our children, feel free to just walk away and maybe come back when your emotional uh, space is 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 more suited to uh, to address this issue. Um, you know, uh, we we also want to make sure that you understand how important it is that we have candid conversations. You know, one of the things that I have come to realize is that COVID has not only ravaged us in a uh, a physical sense, uh, the deaths we last month, I mean, last week, we uh, uh, came to a million um, uh, people who died, a million people who died. And we are still trying to fathom what a million people look like. And uh, it was Dr. Uh, Michael Osterholm that said that if you would just take a million names and you just started calling them one by one, it would take you an entire year if you called them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want you to think about that. If you called them 24 hours, seven days a week, it would take you a year to do that. Well, that's the toll that it's taken. Now think about this. There's been mothers, there's been fathers, there have been grandparents, there's been uncles and aunts and cousins, all children who have lost their support system. M many orphans, orphans have been created through COVID. That has taken a toll. And so we're going to talk about that. I'd like to bring forth uh, my uh, 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 to talk about this um, uh, this is our cutting edge uh, salute to Mental Health Awareness Month. This is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And so we want to talk with our, um, our special guests about mental health of our children. Now, let's get started because I can't get started without the person who starts it with me. He's my co-host, better known as Dr. T, but he's really Dr. Stephen B. Thomas. And uh, he's the professor in, of the University of Maryland School of Public Health and director of uh, the Maryland Center for Health Equity. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my co-host, a brother from another mother, Dr. Stephen B. Thomas. Hey, Dr. T, how you doing? Hey, Mayor Neal. It's always good to be here with you uh, every Thursday on the Cutting Edge Show. But this happens to be a Thursday that coincides with graduation. So you're talking about children and i'm so old that those undergrads walking across that stage they still feel like children to me not to diminish 
their path to adulthood, but to recognize what it means to pay it forward and to see the enthusiasm with which they walked across that stage today. And several of them received their MPH degree, master's in public health degree in health equity. Oh, wow. And, and, and one of the folks who walked across that stage works with us. Oh, wow. In the back room, making this show look great. That's Soraya Khan, who <laughs> received her master's degree today. Let's snap for her. Oh, absolutely. And her Soraya. family. Absolutely. Well, you know, those, I, who, go ahead. those who don't know her, they do know graduates. <laughs> and I think we need to celebrate these young people because of the world they're coming into. Mm hmm. Yeah, and how are. we have to prepare them and what a show like this will do uh, for that uh, preparation. The mental health issues, I'm so glad, Mayor, that you put a heartbeat on those numbers. The numbers are so large, you can be numb to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to open ourselves up to the realization and the empathy of the loss that is out there. So this is a theme that won't just be for a month as we move forward. It'll be an ongoing engagement around emotional wellness. Yeah. You know, we talked about moving from the pandemic to endemic stage. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm of the opinion, based on just what I'm seeing, that COVID is probably something we got to learn to live with and uh, we got to figure out how to do that. So, yeah, that's uh, that's a big thing. So we got we're going to have a wonderful thing. Let's let's bring up our team because, you know, you and I, you know, they see us. <laughs> Uh, but uh, they uh, they they need to know that there are people behind the scene who are really making this thing happen. Let's go back uh, so that we can uh, uh, show our team uh, the cutting edge team behind the scene. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the team behind the scene, uh, headed up by uh, Meg Jordan, our technical director. Maggie Daly is our assistant technical director, and our graduate. There we go. Saraya <laughs> Khan, who is our graduate, snaps again there for her with a master's degree, uh, social media and uh, communication guru. We have uh, Kimberly Kimmy Fleming, who is social media and uh, media curator. And uh, of course, our sound, sound designer is Elijah Pugh Jr. And uh, that makes up our, our team. I saw you rocking through the beat, man. Oh, man, you know, I do it all the time, man. It's, it's got that kind of, it's got that groove to it, you know? Yeah. So, so, so let's, let's, uh, let me tell you how you can uh, uh, follow us. Make sure that you um, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, you can like, uh, subscribe, and uh, share uh, this show with the people that you know. And it's so important because each and every week we bring you a dynamic show with information that you can use. It's practical information. And we're talking to real people. Technically, we're going in the barbershop. That's right. And we're having a conversation. And that's what this is about. So authentic I'm so excited about it. Yeah, an authentic conversation. Don't forget that you can um, subscribe to our newsletter. It comes out each and every week uh, by... Um, uh, just checking that QR code out, just putting your phone up to it, the camera of your phone, and you can get our newsletter uh, each and every week. And once you get into the database, we send it to you automatically. So you'll always know what we're doing. And uh, one thing that's great about uh, our newsletter, it has uh, the previous shows in it. We have vignettes, uh, clips of uh, different uh, guests on the show. Uh, it has always good information that you can use to keep you understanding what's happening in the context of public health. If, if you think about it, uh, the Cutting Edge show is all things health and wellness. So mm -hmm. we deal with health and wellness from many perspectives. And so it's so important that we do that. Well, um, Dr. T, you ready to get going? I got my seatbelt buckle. <laughs> Well, you know, let, go ahead. Let go me ahead, just Dr. say this. We, we've said this before, and it's a, a running theme. Who are you sharing air with? Because the virus is spread by aerosols. I want to point out something for those folks who are, who when we were on stage today, they literally had ultraviolet light on the stage where the faculty were, and ultraviolet light kills COVID in the atmosphere. Well, we got to talk about the ways in which we can mitigate and make it available 
to our most vulnerable neighbors and family members. We know how to protect our community and we need to make sure they know how to advocate for that protection. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's bring, um, Miss Six up first. I, let, let's let's uh, let me let me introduce her. Um, you know, I I I I want you to know that uh, we went down to Alabama now. I want you know, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I I just love my folk up here in Alabama. Uh, Jacqueline Hicks, uh, master's uh, degree. Uh, she has her master's as well, man. You know, she attended the University of Alabama where she received her BA and uh, Alabama State University, where she received her uh, master's degree. She works uh, in mental health for over 30 years, serving mm. both children and adults. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming right. Miss Jacqueline Hicks. Hey, Miss Hicks, how you doing? Welcome to the cutting edge. You Make, have to unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. yourself. <laughs> unmute yourself. All right. Now we go. go. Good, good. How you doing? I am doing well, thank you. Good, good. You know, we uh, uh, we've been talking about doing this show, but what we wanted to do, we wanted to talk to people who had boots on the ground, practitioners, people who literally work with children. That's been something that you have done basically your whole career. You you started very early. Uh, with what you wanted to do, and you have st- stuck to that. Let's let, let me let me do this. I, I I know I didn't do the best introduction of you. How would you introduce yourself? Uh, just as you did, just fine. You did a great. <laughs> tell us tell tell us something people don't know when they look at that professional bio about you. Um, I worked with uh, a diverse group. I started out with. Uh, 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 schizophrenics at the VA mm. and I did interviews with schizophrenics um, I worked on a study with Eli Lilly and I moved from there to uh, children in Lee County and from that's, Lee a, that's County, in Alabama man I want you all to know that. Yes, Lee yeah. County, Alabama. <laughs> and from Lee County I was a uh, juvenile court liaison in Tallapoosa County and also a uh, child counselor in uh, Lee County. Um, I stayed in the mental health field for quite a while. I went to uh, HRDI and worked with women who we were trying to uh, decrease the recidivism rate from them being a revolving door going back into prisons and jails. Mm. And so it was an awesome program where they, put these women back into society with tools to help them to make it. And they put them back with their children and with families. But I still ended back up um, working with adults and children um, after Mm. that. So that's, I've just been there. You've been in this space. And uh, that's why it's so important that we have you here. Uh, We got a whole lot to talk about, and we're going to get into this. Now, I want you to know this. We're in the barbershops and the hair salons. That's where we are now, right? So that's how we're going to have this conversation, just like you would be uh, with with the way you got your hair did. (laughs) 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 Love it. You know, that's wonderful. We're going to have a Anything goes. Everything goes. We're going to have a wonderful conversation today. Good, good. uh, Let me me bring uh, uh, Miss... Uh, mm-hmm. Sharon uh, Scott, you know, she's not no any. You, you hear Sharon? Make sure that you say that properly, <laughs> right? She she hails to us from Cleveland, Ohio. Buckeye. Uh, she, she, uh, right, Buckeye. <laughs> you know, you all got that rivalry going on. Uh, she has uh, been in practicing social work since uh, 2014. She's a graduate of Cleveland State University in Cleveland, Ohio where her bachelor's degree is in social work. I'm not gonna go through everything, but I wanna let you know how um, how proud we are of her and how appreciative we are that she's joining with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Miss Sharon Scott. Hey, hey, Miss Scott, this is how we clap. Welcome <laughs> to the cutting edge. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good. Now I have to, I didn't tell you this uh when we were behind the scene. 
But every summer, I spent my summers in Cleveland uh, on Kinsman, between Kinsman and Union, right? I know you know what that is, right? right? Yeah. That's yeah. exactly where I spent every <laughs> summer growing up, right? So, uh, so I have a connection, an affinity uh, for Cleveland as well, not just Dr. T with Ohio, right? You right? just so, had to fit in. It's yeah, okay. So, so we yeah. really cool. So hey, tell Shay us Ron, a little bit about yourself. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Dr. T. I didn't say, Shay Ron, we'll make him an honorary Buckeye, all right? <laughs> we can do that. All right. Tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Um, I am. I've been working with At Risk Youth my whole career. Um, I started out at um, working on a stabilization and critical care unit uh, with mental health. And I moved on to work with some lovely children in Alabama. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, lovely. Just lovely. Yeah, lovely. Yes, yes. Great times, great times. Um, and then now I am a school, not a school counselor. I'm a mental health counselor at a school. So I work through the mental health facility with the education school in the um, Union Springs in Alabama, from Ohio to Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and went all the way to Union Springs. Now, you know, we've, we've had the superintendent of Union Springs, uh, 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 Mr. Chris, Dr. Christopher Blair, uh, love him. who's been on the show as well. So so uh, and, and Union Springs is to like maybe 20 miles away from Tuskegee or less. Uh, you know, I can throw a rock to Union Springs. From Tuskegee. <laughs> so, hey, you know, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I noticed something in Miss Scott's bio right at the end. I'm dedicated to being the ear for the voices of those unheard. I hope I got that right. Mm. Sharon, you put that in there for a reason. What did that mean? Why was it important? Yes, it was important because um, growing up, I didn't get that ear. And so I dedicated myself to be that ear. And a lot of kids... Uh, get passed through the system and fly under the radar because no one takes the time to listen. Mm. Wow, that's powerful. Thank, you. thank thanks, Doc, for uh, for for finding that little nugget because that was very mm -hmm. important. It's important that you you ask that question. Thanks, uh, Miss uh, Sharon Scott. Uh, okay, let's bring on. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Daryl Powell. Uh, is 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 ready now uh, he is another Alabama man you know I told you this is this is uh, uh, full of Alabama po folk today you know he's the executive director of the Alabama Council on Developmental Disabilities uh, he served as the program coordinator and or executive director for a pro pro private nonprofit organization for nearly 21 years he has been uh, had the privilege to, uh, to also serve as uh, the professional development instructor and partner for the statewide human service, service organization to improve service delivery outcomes by developing, applying, and promoting best practices, accreditation standards. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Daryl Powell. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> That's not for Daryl. Hey, and Mayor, he also has a degree from Tuskegee University. How about that? Absolutely. <laughs> well, you, you know, you have to realize you that. that. <laughs> well, you know, I don't miss that. I was going to come up with that. You, if you notice what's behind him, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Right. Hey, Mr. Powell, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you all doing today? Good, good, man. Um, t you know, you know, a Tuskegee man love a Tuskegee person, right? So, you, you know, we... We we here, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We we here. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Obviously, you know, when we and we do this oftentimes because we recognize that, you know, we can read stuff, but people know what they want people to know about themselves. If you were to introduce yourself to our audience, what would you say? Well, um, I, I, I would say I'm a product of Tuskegee. You know, Tuskegee has a lot of heritage and um, I'm proud to say that I'm a product of Tuskegee. I spent my great, great year school, great early grades um, there. 
um, as well as um, a graduate of Tuskegee University, the, you know, TU, and, and that is something to be proud of. And I'm very, you know, proud that I was able to, um, you know, graduate from Tuskegee with the blessing of the Lord and, and, and just, you know, be able to just help, you know. And so, you know, uh, I'm an athlete, and, you know, I have, have been an athlete, and uh, I ain't going to say at 48 I'm an athlete, but, you know, um, <laughs> you know I, just, I grew up playing football, basketball, part of the community. So I just, you know, love people and, and, and always been around and trying to help. And I guess that's what led me to to the area that I'm, you know, done for so long. So um, mm. just, you know, just excited about just being a Tuskegee grad, just being a person from Tuskegee. Right. Well, we love you, man. And thank you so much for for representing to you. You know, you know. Right. Yeah. No. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Let's go to the uh, 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 next person, uh, Roberta uh, Taylor Jones. Uh, she is somebody that I've known for uh, quite some time. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not going to it's not on her bio, but you're talking about somebody can cook. Lord, it must have. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's not that she, 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 you know, she does all the other stuff. You know, she's an Auburn University at uh, 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 Montgomery graduate, uh, 33 years experience in the field of human services, eight specifically in mental health. We And I could go on and on. She spent time in Tuskegee, lived in Tuskegee for a while. I don't know where she lives now, but I know she lived in Tuskegee. She's uh, a friend of the family, uh, Disclosure, right? Uh, and of course, uh, she has always been passionate about working with children and families. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Roberta Taylor Jones. Hey, how All you doing? Right. Welcome. Good welcome. evening. Good evening. <laughs> how you doing today? I am well, and I'm glad to be here and glad to have been asked to be here. Oh, absolutely. You know, one of the things, and this is why this is so well, well, this show is important to me and, and special to me because each of you all are from Alabama. And although, you know, this show is out of Washington, D.C., the Maryland area, that 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 area up there, this is really a Tuskegee, Alabama show. OK, today. Right. Because because that's how it is. Right. So we're so happy about that. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Taylor Jones, tell people about you. I'm you know, I told them that you you cater. Right. Right. And yes, I do. And I kind of fell into catering by way of uh, organizations that I was in uh, over the years and having, you know, every meeting in the South, you have to have a meal. <laughs> uh, so not only do you have to have a meal. I try to do a little bit of all of that. Um, so I do thank you. So hopefully everybody hears this and I get some more business from this. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that, that can happen hey hey mayor i just want to say about the the alabama and the hollywood squares isabel wilkerson told our story of the great migration and a whole lot of us up north above the mason dixon line have our roots down south down in south. alabama yeah. mississippi yeah. Mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. we're coming home tonight when it comes to dealing with the mental health yeah. of our community what better place to come to than mm -hmm. our friends and family from down south to understand what's going on and to come up with treatment models consistent with our community's cultural needs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I wanted to ask uh, uh, Ms. Taylor, and actually all of them, this is a tough area to spin your career. I don't know if they come in on career day and talk about careers in mental health versus all the other firemen and things that they teach kids. So what spurred you to take this path for your career, Ms. Taylor? Well, for me, um, I've had several challenges throughout my life. Um, so I too, like Mr. Powell, am a people person. Um, I love people and I'm very interested in hearing what people have to say. Um, I'll be honest with you, when I started my uh, educational career in college, I, I wanted to be in business. Um, however, and, you know, when you're in college, you take several different classes. Um, so I kind of, you know, started like, well, I think I want to change that career path. And that's what I did. Um, mm. However, uh, I, I'll be honest with you, when I, my teachers used to take us on field trips, which they don't do much of now in college. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to a particular place and uh, we were there 
you know, for maybe about an hour and I vowed that I would never work there. It was just going to be too challenging. It was a mental health facility. And the particular program that we, in, we were in, um, they were severely uh, MR. Mm-hmm. And I said, I, I couldn't do it. Well, MR, no MR, was, MR stands for? Uh, mentally retarded. Okay. That's for mm-hmm. the audience who may not know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So with that being said, four years later, guess where I ended up? Right back right. there at that facility. Right. Right back in that very same cottage. Oh, um, <laughs> so again, that goes into that never say never thing. Ever. Right. Right. Um, but it's uh, again, all the experiences that I've had, um, whether it be with the mentally ill, mentally retarded, mentally challenged population, or whether it be with at risk population or the juvenile court system population, uh, we're all in the same bucket. Yeah, let, let, me, let me move into this conversation. Thanks, uh, uh, Dr. T, for, for teeing it up, uh, no pun intended. Uh, but I, I wanna talk a little bit about, and I wanna bring Mr. Powell in on this, man. You know, um, young people have challenges just naturally, growing adolescents, the developmental uh, changes that go on. But in the midst of a pandemic where there are so many people are in influx, this has to exacerbate uh, those challenges. I, I want to talk to you from what you are seeing in terms of our children who are experiencing this kind of destabilization due to COVID. Is that from Mr. Powell? Yeah, Mr. Powell. I, that's yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's fine. Um, well, one, um, being where I am now, you have to be able to relate. You got to be able to understand where that particular youth or whomever is coming from. And sometimes, you know, people kind of lose focus or lose track because you cannot relate to a particular kid for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And not able to, to, to relate kind of frustrates both parties, the kid and the person that's, you know, trying to work with the kid. Mm -hmm. So you got to first understand where that kid is coming from, understand and and, and get to know that kid before you start doing anything. Because if you don't know a kid, it's it's hard to, you know, judge a book by its color. You know, once you open up the pages, you may see something totally different. So Mm -hmm. just getting to understand, getting to know that kid. One of the things that I used to utilize, one tool that I used to utilize when a kid come into my care was hold up a blank sheet of paper, you know, after he or she has been through whatever they've been through throughout their life, everybody then threw them out, don't want them, don't, you know, so hold up a blank sheet of paper and say, hey, you know, what, is, what you know, what color is this paper? What's on this paper? And they like nothing. And, and you know, people have already given them up. So my, advi- my you know, my information to them at that particular time was anything, you- put on this paper, any writing, any mark is placed on this paper, you're going to put it on there. And, and, and of course, what does that mean? You know, I'm not judging you based on where you've been. I'm based on judging, you know, looking at where we are now and where mm-hmm. you're trying to go. Because mm-hmm. you can have a bad life, terrible life, and decide to turn your life around and do all the right things. So, mm-hmm. you know, just, just relating to the kid alone, you know, can get you a great distance with the particular kid. And I was one of those ones who always worked with the worst through the worst. You know, Ms. Mm. Jones would tell you, you know, we've worked together for many, many years. And <laughs> for some reason, I was always connected to those kids who just didn't have a father, didn't have a home, didn't, you know, everybody has given them up. So mm-hmm. that's how I was able to help a lot of the kids that I've helped because I connected with them. And, and a lot of them, you know, I was in some of their shoes. At right. some point or another, you know, because right. everything that I've gone through, I had to get to where I am. And sometimes the kids got to understand you are not in this alone. You may not have a mother in, of, uh, involved. You may not have a father, but you are not in this alone. So mm. I'm going to help you. I'm going to you know, support you to get where you're trying to go. And you'll be amazed of how powerful that can be working with any kid, the worst of the worst. And yeah. That's how I've been able to to rate. That's just one way, you know. I've yeah. got a pocket of tools that could, you know, just, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. any any area that I need to go to. 
Well, th that's why being in it so long, uh, uh, Dr. T, it ain't where you're from, it's where you're going. It ain't what you've done, it's what you're doing. And although you see my glory, you don't know my story. And that's what Dr. Uh, I call him Dr. Powell, but but you know, uh, th that's I what Mr. Powell just said. said. He's, that's, I encapsulated what he said and put it in, in the street <laughs> terms, right? All right, uh, but you let, know, let's it, go ahead. Just, just one other thing that he said, I don't want to miss that when you're making that relation, connecting, you have to share something about yourself. And, and, and you shared your vulnerability with these young folks so they know that you have been places that they have been. Did that open up opportunities for connecting? Oh, yes, huge, huge. Um, you know, oftentimes, you know, in the counseling field, social services field, you know, you, you got to be careful about self-disclosure, you know, and they're going to tell you, teach you, you know, you don't want to self-disclose, you don't want to say this, but if a kid feel like you don't know anything about where they've been, it's going to be hard to help that kid. So you, you, you have to self-disclose some to a degree. You got to be cautious, you know, it, what you disclose, but if you've been through a particular situation, you can give a kid a clip of what you've been through to let them know that you have some knowledge about it. You know, one of the things I, you know, I, I was, was, was a grief counselor and I used to counsel kids with, you know, who've lost their mother, uh, you know, no, you know, death, whatever the case may be. And, you know, although I had the experience, the, 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 the education and the knowledge, but it's, you know, I lost my mom in December of 2020. Mm. I've been counseling kids all of these years but when you actually go through it mm -hmm. and you've lost a mother yourself, right. you can relate on a different level. It's a whole know? nother and I, level. And a yeah. whole nother level. And, and mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I was able to help the kids who, and when I didn't lose a mother was because I was honest with them. I said, look, I don't know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. I haven't experienced that, but I can tell you that I'm going to help you get through this. So they understood that. But when I lost my mom, now, if I go back and counsel a kid who has lost their mom, it's going to be on a different degree, different level, because now I've experienced. So when a kid hear that, hear you say that, and they know that you've gone through it, they'll sit down and listen to you. They'll get, they'll have a whole conversation, you know, with you because they know that you're feeling some of the pain that they're feeling. Thank you. Wow. You know, Miss um, Scott, um, you know, what I have... Um, come to realize is that people deal with uh, trauma differently. And, um, you know, based on what you're seeing with young people today, have you uh, had the occasion to see any particular reason or any particular way that these young people are processing the kind of uh, social isolation, social distancing? Uh, how, how has this pandemic generally speaking, uh, impacted uh, the young folk today? Um, we have seen a rise in mental health cases due to the pandemic because they're not able to go hang out with their friends or just be out and about um, with friends. And when the schools were shut down, it was it was like everybody, every man for themselves and nobody mm -hmm. knew you know, who they were. And so they would be get together on the game or something like that to be able to connect, but to have that face-to-face, -face, be able to hug their friends, play with their friends, joke with their friends, they didn't have that. And so it was a lot of isolation and depression coming from it, anxieties because they don't know what's next. They don't know what's happening. Their parents can't tell them what's happening because they didn't know. And so we did see a rise in um, mental health needs, um, especially in the elementary um, schools mm. due to the mm. pandemic. Wow. Can you say a little bit about what did it look like? What would, what would one see to, to know, hey, the, this child might need help? How did it manifest? Um, well, to coming from, because a lot of from the elementary school, their parents would, you know, report Hey, my kid is doing this. My kid hasn't doesn't normally do this, and they're doing this now. Mm -hmm. They're crying for no reason. They won't do this. They won't do that. They're acting out, jumping off walls, jumping on this, and so it's a lot. It was a lot of parent reports. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay. Wow. Well, you know, Miss Hicks. Um, you know this this um, this notion of mental health 
particularly in the African-American community, has always been a challenge because the stigma attached to mental health, right? And so nobody wants to admit that they may be experiencing some mental health challenges. How, how have you been able to articulate to the people to whom you deal with that mental health is very similar to physical health? It is a health and that people, it, it doesn't mean that you are weak because you have mental health challenges. How, how do you articulate that? Um, my biggest way of saying that is um, I kind of come to it from a point of diabetes because um, diabetes is very prevalent in um, African-Americans. And so I would say to them that um, insulin is a, is a hormone. And so um, have you seen anybody that, um, as, oh, uh, as country folks call it, sugar? Right. Have you seen anybody that sugar was up or they sugar was down and they um, the behavior changed? And they said, yeah. I said, well, were they shamed to go to the doctor or to the hospital? And they would say, no. I said, well, your behavior changes. What makes you so shamed to come in here? Mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you were sick um, and you knew you could get help, or if your mom was sick and you knew your mom could get help, would you stop it because somebody was shamed? I mm. said, if you take medication in order to feel better. So you would take medicine for your diabetes and you would take your medication for your heart and you would even take medicine for your eyes, but you won't take medication to make you feel better in order to go see about all those different things. Hmm. And so that's how we kind of started off. And, and that's how they're able to give it back to their families that if I, if I can make myself feel better um, enough to go and see about myself or make myself feel better, it's, it's not that you're crazy. And that's what they get a lot of crazy. And so I said, mm -hmm. um, tell me what crazy is. And they give all kinds of answers. And I said, you know what? Crazy is doing the same thing each time and expecting to get something different from it. Mm -hmm. So I would have them, I would hit my chair. I said, now I'm hitting this chair and I want this chair to get over there by you. And I keep hitting the chair and I say, have this chair move. And they said, no. I said, well, if I keep hitting it, is it going to move? And they said, no. I said, well, I got to push it, right? And they said, yes. Yeah. So I said, I push it a little. I said, you crazy is doing the same thing over and over, expecting something different to happen. I said, you're not crazy. People have problems with um, chemical imbalances. Mm -hmm. They have problems where they're not able to talk to people because they don't feel comfortable because they've been shamed to talking to people. Mm -hmm. That's why we come to mental health. We don't come to mental health because we're crazy. Wow, so I like that's that. how I, I work. like that. That's, that's powerful. Yeah. That, New that, metaphors. That is, that is, that is very, very powerful. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do one thing. Let's, let's do the uh, uh, emotional check now let's let's kind of do the word cloud and uh, get an emotional temperature of how we feel collectively <laughs> and then we're going to do uh, the public health minute with meg we're going to bring you up then i want to talk to uh, uh miss taylor about uh, all the stuff that's uh happening uh particularly with youth in alabama because i know that youth in alabama is merely a microcosm of what's happening nationwide so let's uh first do the word cloud dr t tell them how they can do it and, you know, I think our Alabama mental health professionals are going to love this. Every week, we ask people to think of a word that best describes how you're feeling right now, this moment in the pandemic, and then just type that word in the chat. And for the next 60 seconds, just type as many words as possible, one at a time, into the chat. And those out in uh, Facebook land and social media, you can use your Q&A box, and our, our team behind the scenes will build a cloud and when that cloud is ready, uh, the, the larger the word, the more people who said it. And that gives us an idea of how people are feeling out there. And it gives us an idea of, of themes for each of you to speak to. So mm. just put those words in, uh, as many words, don't worry about spelling, just get them in there. And the team behind the scenes will build the cloud that let us know when it's ready. Uh, yeah. Mayor, at some point we need to take, we, I think we may have, over 90 shows up to this point. Put those clouds together. I think we got over 100 show. shows. I don't know how many we got, <laughs> but we got tons of them. Right? But as the pandemic has ebbed and flowed, you'll see the ebb and flow and the emotion that our audience is speaking to. And they're sharing what they're hearing 
in the barbershops and salons across the country. Mm, yeah. Uh, Meg, uh, uh, I know that I'm probably taking you away from everything, but we got some other people that can can help with that. But uh, Meg, the uh, Public Health Minute. Okay. We want to run the numbers too. I want to make sure we do that uh, so people kind of know where we are on the on that as well. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, thank you, Maggie. Um, okay. So this week we have 700,000 new cases of COVID-19. This is the highest single week of new cases since February when we were coming off the Omicron wave. Um, we've had 2,000 deaths this week from COVID-19 um, and we have just 451,000 people who've been fully vaccinated for the first time in this pandemic this week. Um, this week, 988,000 people got their boosters for COVID-19. If you are over 50, you can get two boosters. If you are under 50 and above 18, you can get a booster as well. Um, next, Maggie. That's just my plug for boosters. Um, <laughs> Mary Neal wants me to boost the booster. I'm trying to out here. <laughs> it's um, important. It's important. It's important. Go ahead. Yes. So this brings us to 82.9 million people in the U.S. who've gotten COVID in the past two years plus, because we know we just hit that marker. Um, we are at a million deaths still um, for COVID-19. Um, so we are at two thirds of America fully vaccinated, and we are at one third with their boosters. Um, Okay, so the Public Health Minute this week, um, we are continuing on our series on long COVID. So one of the things we've been talking about with long COVID is something I've been saying cognitive decline, something people experience. So I wanted to talk about what cognitive decline is um, and, and what you can kind of notice um, in a person who's experiencing it. So um, approximately 22 to 32% of people who get COVID have brain fog very generally. That's a very general term. It can mean a lot of different things. Um, but um, please remember that you can get long COVID from mild cases or from severe cases. Um, being hospitalized, being not hospitalized, you can get long COVID either way. Um, next, Maggie. So, um, some of the ways that long COVID can impact your um, cognition, the way you think, is in attention. So attention is how you can filter out new information that doesn't matter, right? How can you pay attention even when a TV is on in the other room? Um, can you sit for long periods of time and complete a task? That's attention. Um, memory, can you learn th new things? How many th can you remember things that just happened, right? Um, can you remember things that have happened a long time ago, right? Um, and then executive function. Um, so planning, multitasking, things like that. Can you complete a, a complex task? You know, when you start cooking, do you finish the whole recipe? Do you do it in order? Do you get distracted and walk away? These are things that start happening when you've got cognitive decline. Um, and then just something to keep in mind is that, um, next Maggie is that um, you might not notice these things, um, but other people might notice them in you. So sometimes with cognitive decline, um, you can kind of feel it and sometimes you can't. So just pay attention um, and, and listen to people around you. Um, and right now we don't know, um, long COVID could be temporary. It could be longer, um, but they're finding sometimes it resolves after a couple months. Um, so I, I don't want to scare anybody into thinking this is something permanent for the rest of your life, you know, things like that. We, we just don't know that yet. Um, so that's your public health minute this week. Thanks, uh, Thanks Meg. Thank you, Meg, Meg Jordan. Thank you, Meg. Uh, Meg Jordan, uh, yes. Our uh, technical director, but she <laughs> does uh, that uh, piece. And it's so important that we put things in perspective and, and we always have to give information, believing that when people get the proper information, they naturally gravitate to take care of themselves. Ms. Taylor, I, I, I wanted to uh, come back to you because you know you worked in both institutions as well as where people were not institutionalized. A have you noticed uh, any difference in young people who are institutionalized and young people who are not 
based on how they are processing COVID? Well, um, sad to say um, that many of our children that have been institutionalized um, learn, learn, learn from the next one. Um, and these habits that they're learning uh, are not always uh, positive habits that they're learning. However, the ones that are not institutionalized, um, they also have what we call social media. So mm. they're learning as well from others that might not be the most positive thing. Um, yes, social media can be a, a great advantage. Um, we're on social media now doing something very positive. However, um, as we all know, um, things have been taken to the left, as they say, and the children, they, the teens mostly, but, but now it has, it's getting a little younger. Um, they're, looking at, they're looking at more things, experiencing more things earlier. And a lot of times you don't have the parental guidance at home. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the ones that are in the institution, most of those children lost their parental guidance. So then mm. they depend on others to become their surrogate mothers and fathers. And I'll be honest with you on that too. The turnover rate in the institutions are so high that most times there's no type of linkage or um, any kind of uh, positive you talk about the personnel. You're talking about the personnel. Yes, right. yes the personnel that work with the, children, with the youth. Right. So, so if they don't have any kind of positive um, linkages, then nine times out of 10, um, unless they make a decision that this is not the life they want to continue to live, then they usually take that other road. Uh, the ones who are not in institutions, yes, they have a better chance. However, again, if you don't have that parental guidance or those mentors, that are providing positivity in their lives, they too will end up in the same path. Yeah. So, so basically they're, you know, you know, I guess young people are, are getting influenced whether or not they're inside an institution or outside of institution. Exactly. They're still being influenced. They're still what, being influenced. Saying. Yes. Wow. And, you know, and, and, and a lot of times I, you know, in, in Dr. T, I'll, I'll take what mm -hmm. you're saying. But a lot of times is that these young people are lacking parental guidance, yes. right? And that could be due to incarceration rate. Uh, it, it was a lot of uh, young men who don't have fathers because of the high incarceration rate of particularly African-American men, right? And yes. also you have drug addiction where people may be present, but not present really. And uh, there are just a multiplicity of things where they're not getting the proper parental guidance that can exacerbate these issues. So they go out looking for uh, relationships and influence in places that maybe are not as positive as they should be. Is that, is that is, right? I want to I do want to say something in regard to uh, whether it be the male or the female figure in the home. You may have a two parent household. However, just because you have that two-parent household, it does not mean that both parents are effective. First of all, parenting mm. is a team effort. Second of all, you may have the parent in the home who is physically there, but not emotionally there. Mm. I have several people who will look at a child and say, well, what do they need a mentor for? They have a mom and a dad. But if the mom and the dad are not emotionally present, it's like not having parents at all. Wow. So, so, so just because you have a mother and father in the household doesn't mean that you have a mother and father in the household. Exactly. Wow. That's, that's powerful in a powerful statement. Um, uh, Doc T, you want to say something? Well, you know, as I'm listening to my, 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 my new friends and colleagues from Alabama, I, I remember growing up where uh, my family came out of the South and they would have fictive kin. And in other words, People who weren't blood relatives, but were who who were who were parental in the role they played, and I'm wondering as you're about to meet some of our barbers and stylists from around the country, the role they play in saying the right thing at the right time, helping right. a kid make a decision. How might they, in the with the influence they have, be mentors 
in ways that we may not fully appreciate and how might we lift them up? Maybe they'll talk to us about the role that they play with young people. Yeah, let, let me it's do a, this. It's the village because they're part of the village, right? Absolutely. Part of the village. Absolutely. Let's bring on Dr. Cooper first, uh, Dr. Sharon Cooper, and then we'll, we'll, we're will we going to bring on our uh, barbers and stylists and how we have this conversation in, in the shop. Hey, Dr. Cooper, how are you doing today? Good evening, Mayor Neal. Good evening, everybody. How is Good. everyone doing tonight? Wonderful, wonderful. You know, hearing what you're hearing from, these are practitioners. That's why, I, I, you know, and I know I love the academicians, right? I love y'all <laughs> that's in the universities and all of that. These people, this is where the rubber hits the road, right? Each one of these individuals deal with children directly, mm -hmm. right? They, they have to, they see their pain on a, on a direct level. It's not theoretical. This is, this is real, right? And so, so talk to them about what you've heard from them and what you glean from this conversation. Oh, wow. This is incredible. Tell us a little um, bit about who you are. Yeah, well, yeah, let's do that first. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Sharon Gibbs Cooper. Uh, my mentor is Dr. Stephen Thomas. And I have worked closely with the HAIR Project, uh, which is part of the uh, Center for Health Equity at the University of Maryland. And I have the privilege of doing my capstone project on uh, looking at ways that community health workers can bridge the gap uh, that so is so prevalent in uh, com vulnerable communities uh, in bridging uh, that gap and connecting them to not only health education, but health services to address areas like cardio uh, metabolic disease, such as hypertension, diabetes, to address uh, COVID-19, among other things, mental health, and just getting individuals connected to the appropriate setting at the appropriate time. And the value of this particular conversation, like uh, Dr. Neil and Dr. Thomas <laughs> have mentioned tonight, is the fact that it's a powerful, as I said earlier, reminder of the importance of mental health. Mm -hmm. But also the other arm of that is access. Um, I work uh, closely with uh, diversion programs for not only adults, but for children. And those programs are mental health courts, uh, truancy courts, uh, drug courts. And it's, it, it's, again, we look at the root or underlying causes mm -hmm. and those contextual determinants that impair people from getting the help in the appropriate, at the appropriate time um, and in the appropriate setting. So it's so important that this information is out there, but the other aspect or armor that is ensuring that individuals have access. And that's the beauty where there are, you know, Andres and Ms. Reynolds, Ms. Jenkins, Katrina, and all those folks who work in the community because meeting people where they are and opening up those doors and having that conversation and helping to, you know, basically help to eradicate those barriers that people or perceptions that people have about connecting with different services, whether it's healthcare, mental health, uh, employment, and so forth. Hmm. Thanks so much. Um, our, Dr. Cooper has been with us uh, for, I, I don't know when you started, but it's very early in, 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 this, in this space. And we are so appreciative to you uh, because every time you bring such insightful comments that, that capsulate, right? What it is we are working with. That's why I asked you to do that today. You have a way of doing that in such a, a profound way. Dr. T, let's go to the word cloud. Then I'm gonna bring on some of our uh, stylists and barbers. Well, look at this word cloud. Wow. Amazing, wow. amazing, wow. amazing. I can't wait to hear what, what, what some of the folk see here, but Mayor, what do you see? Well, the first see, thing man? that I see is blessed and encouraged, <laughs> right? Because uh, the larger the word, the more people said it, right? And so if you think about it from that vantage point, you know, there are some people who are exhausted in, in, in like Vanna Lou Hamer say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? <laughs> right? That's right. But right. there are people who feel connected, Doc, who feel favored. You know, they, they say in the church, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. Right. Right. So so there are people who feel blessed to be here, even in the midst of, of this crisis in this pandemic. They still can feel favored because they are still here to even have this conversation, even in the midst of them dealing with children who are having multiple challenges. They still feel 
favored because they are there to be a blessing to somebody else because you're only blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. And so that's what I see in, in essence. Hey, Mayor, the little words around the side are also important. And I see the word humbled. That's right. Mm. We've talked about that before, about the, the academics, the, the scientists who need to admit when we don't know things, uh, to say that, to, to humble ourselves. Uh, uh, Mr. Powell gave us an example of how to self-disclose appropriately. That's making oneself humble. Mm. I think we need more of that. Right. Absolutely. You see even calm and faithful and curious, right? Because there's that, that kind of seeking knowledge, that kind of intellectual curiosity, right? And trying to know more about it. And, and so it's, it's so, it's, it's really, it's really powerful, man. And I'm so happy that we were able to get a snapshot there of our go. collective feelings. And that's what the word cloud is. Thank you so much. Uh, you all I, can I, take that down. And I hope somebody uh, tells us what chameleon means in there. Let's see that little chameleon. Well, what's that? You so know, this you, conversation you, is going you to morph open up. into different things. You become a mil- chameleon. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you know, adapt, right, to wherever you are. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a spirit of adaptation. You know, I, I, Dr. T, get all up. Now, you know, you, you, you got to come down south to really understand that. You know, so I, I'm schooling you on. <laughs> Well, somebody oh, better school me on some Southern cooking too. I'm gonna that's do that. what I'm talking about, man. You, you, hold, hold up. Now I'm going to tell you this. When you all come down now, now I want to invite everybody that's on. I want to invite y'all down to Alabama and we're going to have Miss Taylor uh, cater it. Right. There we go. Absolutely. And, and, and then y'all make sure that uh, you, cause you're not going to want to go home. So we're going to get y'all houses to be down here. <laughs> cause once you eat her cooking, you're not going to go back home. Right? <laughs> you're just going to stay down here and say, Hey, can we just hang out with y'all? Right. Right. So, so that's what we're going to do. Hey, let's go, let's go to Sandra Jenkins. Hey, uh, Miss Jenkins, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Good. Wonderful. All the way over what they say in the proximity in the yes. area of Philadelphia. How, tell us a little bit about you and your, uh, what you do, your shop and all of that. My name is Sandra Jenkins. I'm the owner of Naturalist Hair located in Montgomery County section of Philadelphia, which is just a stone throw uh, way of Philadelphia. So many of my clients are rooted, deep seated in the city of Philadelphia and expands all the way out to Delaware, New Jersey. Some folks maybe come in from Chicago, friends of mine that I used to fly with um, years ago. I flew for uh, major carriers and I have to say, Mr. Powell, your backdrop is outstanding. (laughs) <laughs> that uh, red tails was uh, very much a, a great inspiration to my son who aspires to become a pilot. So um, all, right. all, of that, all of that was done right in naturalist, all that Alexander and that, that whole understanding of nurturing, you know, our children goes deep down and beyond just in the this, this salon that that is something that you instill within. So right now, um, I must say, I'm very proud that I'm uh, approaching near uh, the completion of the uh, mental health first aid um, to become a community health worker in the state of Pennsylvania. Let's give it up for her. She's going to training now. Absolutely. Mental health first aid. All right. Absolutely. That's so wonderful. (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. So, um, you know, I would like to say that um, our youth is so incredibly important and especially them are returning back from the pandemic. Um, There was a relationship that we had to instill and build on Zoom. We had to do that. And some of these youths that we um, that that naturalists uh, that we nurture, you know, generally they do have parents. They have parents that, you know, are uh, very much involved in their lives and as Mrs. Um, um, uh, Hicks was saying that, you know, you may have some parents who really are just not really that much engaged in their children for some other reason or another, and they look out for that village. And I must say that um, I uh, uh, very much, um, you know, just really take deep in heart of the children that I, um, that I nurture and, uh, and, and they, they are, uh, of uh, uh, great young people, um, their interest in their self-care is really something that they want to learn. They want to learn the importance of self-care, and and starting that right there in the salon is key. Good. You know? mm-hmm. 
Thank you so much. Um, uh, let's uh, thank so much, uh, Sandra Jenkins, all the way. I, uh, you know, y'all, y'all got a whole lot of stuff going on politically up there, but I'm not going to put oh, you. Oh yeah. You, yeah. you know, y'all, y'all. You know, I, 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 I pray for y'all because oh, I got, I see a mess coming. I see a mess on his way. Oh my God. <laughs> oh indeed. Lord, it must. Yeah. Be, you know, oh Lord, I, you know. Rocky uh, Road. Yeah, yeah, do all of this, you know. Ooh. Yes. Oh Lord, something about to happen up in that area. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, that yeah. area, as they say. Hey, let's 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 go all the way uh, over uh, to. Uh, let's go down to Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Uh, oh, Dorothy uh, Reynolds is here. Dorothy hey, Reynolds Dorothy. is with us. Hey, Dorothy <laughs> Reynolds, how you doing? Unmute yourself, Dorothy. Yeah. I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. It, we've had a lot of rain here, but we carried on anyway. Um, tell, us, but, tell us about your event. Well, um, th we had the latest event we had was the informational uh, event where we where we uh, conducted testing drugs. Well, we didn't do it. We had experts from the uh, health okay. department to mm -hmm. come in That's and right. they did uh, testing for HIV and AIDS, um, gl blood glucose, diabetes, and we they decided at the last minute to add mental health because they were afraid if someone was HIV positive, we needed to have someone available mm -hmm. to talk with them. And it, we had um, 41 people there. Awesome. Very Yes, it was a very, very successful event. Um, Let's give her some snaps now. Come absolutely. on. Absolutely. That was wonderful. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, let me, you. let me go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Reynolds. Go ahead. But I would like to add uh, something I was talking to Dr. Thomas about about a month ago. Uh, we, I was riding through the neighborhood and our school was still out. And I saw this group of boys that were playing basketball in the street. And they should have been, if they were homeschooling, they should have been inside on the computer. So I asked them why weren't they? And they gave me a lot of reasons. They didn't have uh, Wi-Fi. They couldn't do it on their telephones. And so I told them they could come down to the shop, to the beauty or barber shop. While there, get some haircuts or trim. Some of them had dreads in their hair. Mm -hmm. And I told them about our clinic. At that time, we were getting ready to have our second um, HIV and, uh, I'm sorry, COVID clinic. And the, some of them said they didn't believe in COVID anyway, that that was something that was uh, man-made and was trying to uh, get people to get a chemical in their body. Mm -hmm. So um, I asked them, had anyone talked to them about it? And they said no. So being me, I'm not afraid of kids. So I told them, I said, I tell you what, I'll buy you all some ice cream if you would listen to me. And they were willing to do it. So I turned around and went back and I did what I said I would do. And they listened and they do, they believe that COVID exists. So they, they're ready for the next, when we do our next clinic. They said they will be there and I'm in, I'm in touch with them. They're back in school. They were back in school. School is, will be out June second. Wow! And then my my tear jerking experience I had in the salon in the barber shop. We had a kid that regularly comes to get his hair cut, but this time it was in the middle of the day. So I asked him why was he there in the middle of the day, and he said he had been expelled and placed in alternate school, and now he was suspended from alternate school for fighting. And I asked him, why was he fighting? And he said, because some kids were picking on him because he had this um, disc on his uh, book bag that said, I have been vaccinated. And he mm. got into a discussion with them about it. And one thing led to another. And he um, started, ended up in a fight. So he's going to the mental health center for, oh, I said behavior center, science center, for counseling because of this. And I, I think it was Sharon, Sharon, 
that I heard say she was working with school. Shay Run. Now get that right. Shay now Run. Shay Run, right? Shay okay. Run. <laughs> Shay Run, right? And you get you got to so separate. I was so glad to hear her. <laughs> Shay Run. I was so glad to hear you say that you do that because before I retired, that was one of the programs that we administered funds for for kids. It is so needed. Um, whatever the reason, if the, if they're assigned to those programs, they are so needed. But the fact that he was, he he said that he was fighting for COVID, <laughs> for his belief in COVID. You, you know, you know, let, 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 let's, let's, let, let, let's, un, let's, let's unpack that, Mr. Powell. Absolutely. Let, let, let's unpack that because, you know, down south in Alabama, you know, you are determined people determine your political affiliation where you whether or not you wore a mask or not you know i mean how how much is peer pressure in terms of the conversation about covid and and all of you all can chime in on that has this been anything that you all experienced whether or not people were for it or against it and or whether or not there was any conversation amongst the young folk about whether or not they were for it or not have you all heard anything of like that yeah um uh, all, often and all the time, you know, and, and you, we're living in a time where, you know, if, if it's not hitting home, people really don't, it, it don't affect them. And, and, and one of the ways that I've kind of brought some understanding or some awareness was talk about some real scenarios, real life situations. And I think many of us may have been affected by COVID in some way, shape or fashion. It may have been directly related. It may have been someone extended, but we have all been affected in some way, shape or fashion. And so when I start to talk about the real life situation that has happened and the real names that it has happened to, mm -hmm. people, they're more apt to listen versus, oh, it ain't real because I've heard those same stories. It's nothing, it's man-made, it's this and it's that. But in reality, you know, COVID is serious. And, mm -hmm. and, and we all have to understand it, regardless whether you 5, 10, 18, 50, whatever, it's real. And when you start relating how you've been impacted and infected by how it affected your life, because see, prior to my mom passing, she had COVID. So that's a whole nother life, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now the doctors say it wasn't COVID that she passed from, but in reality, it stemmed sepsis or whatever the case may be in, it stemmed from COVID. Mm -hmm. So just telling them, you know, hey, this stuff is real. You know, and sometimes you may have to take a different angle, but in you, you, we got to do whatever it takes to get people to understand that it's real. And people are putting masks away right now and COVID is it's ramping back up. So right. we got to understand in order to make it, you, we, first of all, we got to, you know, consult with God, make sure, you know, Talk to him about it and let him know so that he knows to, you know, he understands where we're coming from. And then you got to protect yourself. You know, God gives us wisdom. You know, if you're going to be in a crowd of people and you got to get the kids to understand because kids don't want to wear masks. Mm -hmm. You know, some adults mm -hmm. don't want to wear masks. But if that's going to save my life, if that's going to save somebody else's life, you got to, you know, you got to be able to shift gears and, and give it to them the way they need it. You know, and, and sometimes if we if we are stuck in a box, only have a one way of delivery, we lost. Right. We got to have more than one way to deliver the message. And sometimes we can go to school for, you know, get master's PhD and only have one way delivery and we're not making it nowhere with that kid. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned early on, I have tons of tools in my pocket because you, you got to be able to shift gears. You know, there's no yeah. one set way that's going to help every child. So that's, that's you know, a little of my intake on it. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, it's interesting. I want to bring Ms. Hicks into this conversation as well, because, um, you know, it's, it's obviously confusing for children uh, when they see uh, basketball and they see a stadium full of people and nobody has a mask on. Right. And then, you know, Mr. Powell was telling them that is COVID is real and that it uh, that it can impact them. But they see the contradiction in <clears throat> In, in on television, how, how do you how do you process that? How do you get them to process that? Um, I kind of tell them like my mom told me when I was younger. Um, if 
Everybody jumps off into the Alabama. I knew River. you would go say that. I knew. <laughs> I knew. I promised you. We got the same mama. We. <laughs> My mama but told me the to same thing. That. You gonna it do it just because so somebody else did it. You gonna do it. Boy, you ain't crazy enough to do that. <laughs> but everybody mama told him. And you know, we knew, didn't they? All y'all knew what she was about to say. Right, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, you just take, brought it back to me. That's take, <laughs> take us from the top, Miss Hicks, for those of us up north. <laughs> My mama told so me the, the same Christmas thing. To Alabama. <laughs> And uh, whenever you got in trouble because you did what everybody else did and you knew better, your parents would say, if everybody jumped in the Alabama River, are you going to jump too? Jump too. <laughs> That's the thing that they would say. But I go a little bit further when I talk with the children and even with the adults. And I tell them, I said, okay, so I have a magic remedy. I'm going to take some of this feces and I'm going to rub it all over my face and it's going to make your skin so pretty and I want you to do it. I want you to rub it all over your face. And they was like, no, nah, that's nasty. I know it's nasty. I said, well, you know that you, if you wear your mask, you not you have less chances of getting COVID. So it's all right to get COVID, but it ain't all right to rub feces on your face. But mm -hmm. well, no, it would tell me, because we we dealing with the same concept here. You know better, so you're going to do better. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? And so when you put it in a way that people can understand, they are better uh, able to accept it. Mm -hmm. And like it's that. like when I tell the children that are teased, and I, I thought about that when she was saying that the little boy was fighting, it kind of mm. hurt me. But then again, I said, nobody talked to this child because you didn't have to fight for COVID, baby. And nobody told him that. So my thing with that is, if I came up to you and called you a frog, is that going to turn you into a frog? <laughs> if I told you a worm, it's going to turn you into a worm. And they was like, no, but they saying so-and-so and such-and-such. Such. I said, okay, I just changed the words. The only thing I did was change the words. So they just words. Just because these people say these things about you and say these things to you don't mean you have to engage them in anything. It kind of makes them look kind of crazy because do you look like a frog? Are you green? Yeah. Are you brown? Do you have all of this? webbed hands, any of this, just because people say these things don't make it true. It don't make that true about you. Mm -hmm. And so you don't, you don't have to engage them in anything. If anything, it makes them look like the person that does not know. And so I have to tell children why they're very small. I can't tell them the same things that my dad told me. My mm -hmm. dad used to say, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt. I and heard I that one. That, that, you, <laughs> but, but that, that made it all the way up. Ohio. That one made it all the way up to Ohio. I mean, because they have heard that one too. So. Yeah, and those words hurt me all the time. I was teased yeah. all the time. I was a very skinny, pigeon-toed young lady with big old eyes. And, and I, I had a problem with that. They teased me and teased me until he said, either you're going to live with it or you're going to cry about it every day. You need to get yourself together. And so I learned to live with it. I learned that I can turn my own feet out and walk mm. with it enough turned out till they would um, walk with it enough turned out until they turn back in. They turn mm. the right way. Mm. And I learned to love these eyes. And if I say it about myself, then that takes the sting away. So if you see my car, you will see big eyes on the tag. It mm. takes the sting away. If I said about myself and you said about me, it ain't gonna hurt me. Right. And just because you saying I got big eyes, is that gonna make it any smaller? Well, I think they big, beautiful eyes, if that's the case. <laughs> hey, I think your eyes know. beautiful, if you ask me. But you know what, Doc, Dr. T? You hear what Miss Six talk about when I talk about that, putting it where the cows can get it? You're right. Right. And the other thing she that's done, the kind of conversation we got to have with folk, real conversations. Right. I think it's just beautiful. The metaphors, the the the, the reframing and how right. simple it was. And also I want to just go back to uh, to Miss Dorothy Reynolds for the audience to know she's a warrior, but she didn't start out like this. She went up to youth with dreads playing basketball in the street and a whole lot of adults would have turned away afraid. She went up to them. She engaged them. Now they look to her. She opened up her shop to them. That's what we have to do. Right. And Dorothy has done that in Pine Bluffs, Arkansas, and is now the model for the whole state out of this program. 
All yeah. these shops can be safe havens and harbors for our young people. Yeah. Let's let's go back up to the, the state that's got all the mess going on. Stacy Ruffin. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia, oh, Pennsylvania. You know, Lord, and mercy. <laughs> I, I, we pray for y'all. You know all of that. You know, and 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 I, I, you know, I don't want to say anything about the game. I know you all, y'all are a little upset about that. Uh, it didn't work out the way you were at the game, so we appreciate you coming with us. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings by bringing it I know. up. Though. I know. <laughs> That's right, because I have a great day. I'm, I'm at the actually. The summit, I'm at the Black Enterprise Summit in Philadelphia. It's the first time in two years. So, but I just wanted to just do a synopsis. I'm listening to you guys. I was excited about coming. I was a little late because I was just coming mm -hmm. from the summit and um, at the convention center here in Philly. But um, just, just tapping on what we all talking about, the mask. Um, I probably could count on one hand how many people had a mask. And these um, on today. And I just thought about it. I was one of the ones with a mask, but I just thought about it. I said, man, I said, I just listened to us and every Thursday. And then I listened to how smart and how um, rich these people are, but nobody had a mask on. So I wonder, like, are we really tapping into our people about? how important it is to wear masks um, because it's over a thousand uh, entrepreneurs, um, people, some have hundreds of millions of dollars. Master P was there and it was so many people and not, I could probably put in one hand how many people had a mask on. And, um, and it's a two day summit, but I, I just, I don't, you know, I guess they looked at me like I was strange or, or whatever, but I, I I just wonder. That's I mean, I, I just wonder. Well, well I, 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 I think I think too, um, Miss Ruffin, that there's a lot of mismessaging, even with politics, right? That's right. Uh, right. Uh, Doctor T, you know, public health people have not been consistent. You're right, right on on that, and so it is created, as they say in the hood, confusement. Yes. Right. 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 Y'all done started some confusement in this public health people too. That that's that's a part of that. And so that's when you right. tell people they don't have to put on masks, that's right. Then people stop putting on masks. They think they're okay when they aren't. No, they right? right. And 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 so you know that's that's part of it. So we gotta we got to uh, really rethink how we're going to message message. You know this thing. Uh, to mitigate COVID spread, right? And that's the work that we got to do. And we, we've not done a good job at that. Yeah. And Mayor, you know, the fact that Stacy was there, kept her mask on, felt the eyes on her. Right. Felt that feeling, what's yeah. wrong with you? But she hung in there because she's on the cutting edge. <laughs> she you know, knows sticks and stones may break my bones, <laughs> <laughs> but words would never hurt me. All right, Miss Hitt? <laughs> and she just came off uh, an event Yes. With the youngest, world's youngest barber. Tell us a little bit about that. That was great. Um, Najee, she met a lot of our master barbers. We um, vaccinated, I think it was 28 people that got boosted. But what I was telling her mom, Jamie, um, which was great, they had the news, Action News was there. Okay. But what I needed to... Um, for them to do, I said, why are you coming the day of? We needed the people to get the message out before we have the clinic. So we're going to do it again in, mm. um, in July. But we want to get the message out before with the news. I that, said, was, that was a good turnout. Needles and lives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was, that was yeah. fabulous. That, hold up. Let's stop and give it, you know. Let's give them some snaps. That's uh, right, Stacey. Come on you now. You know, we, 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 we have to really celebrate yes. because, because that's a life that you could have saved. Yes. And, and probably did, right? Yes. So, yes. so, so let's, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's celebrate everything we do. And, it, and a young person, Najee. Najee. Yeah. Najee. 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 Right. Visibility. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's it good. Was, it was great. It's fabulous. 
Good, and good. Aaron, can you believe we got 10 minutes? Yeah, man. And I got to go all the way to Al- yeah, I, I, I'm going to go next to Alabama, go down to Georgia. <laughs> right. Right. Because I got to bring up uh, Andre Ruff- <laughs> Russell, who is, uh, you know, he's he, now now for, for my Alabama contingent, you know, he is a brother who owns a barbershop in the Atlanta airport. OK, now, the only now, one. Hey, 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 hey. Right. <laughs> Right. Hey, man, how you doing? Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. He's still muted. Let me tell you. Yeah, unmute he's yourself. Unmuted. Let me tell the people. One of his shops, he did a thousand COVID vaccinations. OK, Andre, Al. Uh, you you're good now. Andre. There you go. You're on. Right, sorry yeah, good. That. Hey, man. Uh, how are you guys doing today? It's great to see you guys again. And I want to be quick since we only have a couple of minutes. Um, I, I want to do more with the mental health thing, but right now I'm talking to my Emory people, and they are on uh, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and um, so uh, I'm trying to get them to do some things that actually I want to do. So I'm going to need some help, I think, from Dr. T, but even have a, a, our friend, our technical advisor to uh, send me some stuff so that I could talk to Emory and present it to them because uh, I'm limited now to whatever I can present at the airport. And um, I'm going to need her help. I'm sure on that. And Dr. T has always cooked one in the work. I don't, I don't know if you have to, do you know our new marriage just because his name is Andre. Uh, you know he, <laughs> <laughs> I do know one thing. As these health professionals and systems have discovered the barbershop, it's very important that that they just don't come in and run over things. What did Andre say? I want them to come in to address issues I see. Right. Yeah, they're coming in with things that they know from all the epidemiology. I get it. But one of the things we want to do is make sure they bring the services that Andre recognizes the community needs mm-hmm. from right. his vantage point. And yeah. we will bend the arc, Andre, for you to get that. Okay? All righty. And uh, other than that, I'm not going to say anything crazy today. Wow. <laughs> there know, is a God. <laughs> <laughs> but Andre, the, the guys who would, young kids who would sweep the hair up in the barbershop that he mentored, they're now adults, and they have come back to his shop to say thank you. Oh, yeah, by the way, a couple of them over at Emory. I forgot to say that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Andre, you know we love you, man, and and you I can't know. say anything crazy, man. We we <laughs> you, we, we, we we joke and all because this is the barbershop, right? <laughs> right, right. And we can have that kind of conversation in the barbershop. Thanks, Andre, uh, for for, for, for everything. Thanks. Absolutely. Uh, you know, let, as we get ready to to close up, uh, I, I can't I really can't thank you all enough um, for uh, for sharing uh, your thoughts. Uh, obviously, we're trying to figure this out, believing that we are all possessors of some truth. And as we bring our truths together, then and only then do we get closer to the truth. Right. And so your truth was very important. I mean, each one of you. Uh, Miss Shay Run, uh, Scott, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, your truth in understanding from your perspective, working in the school system with the children, you know, seeing, you know, what's happening, getting the uh, the kind of disclosures from parents and, and what they are observing and and sharing that with you all so that you all can work as a team because it takes a village, right, to, to raise a child. So we we are so appreciative uh, to you, uh, Miss Hicks, uh, you know, if it's ever a person that was raised by a grandmama or a granddaddy or, or somebody that 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 was that that had all of those cliches, right? That's in the South. You all got the them wisdoms. all. You got that. Those, those man. Let me tell you something. Those are nuggets. Yes. You, know, you really should write a book, Miss Hicks. Right. Get everything that mom and daddy told me. <laughs> right. Right. You know, because all. And collect them because they yes. because because we all got them, but we forget them. Right. Mm-hmm. But they are just as relevant today as they were when they told you. Yes. Right? It's a pamphlet. I'll put them in my shops. Absolutely. <laughs> and, 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 and certainly, uh, Miss uh, Roberta Taylor. Thank you so much for for who you are. You have always been, you know, a 
person who is a servant, you know, you have, Dr. T, have you ever known somebody who's always just there for people? And mm -hmm. I don't know if she has no in her vocabulary, right? Because she's always helping people and people know she's going to help them. If you asked her to do something and if she can do it, she'll do it for you because right. she believes that she's there to be a blessing to somebody because you're only blessed to be a blessing to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I can right? see she's fearless too. Right, right. And so she's she's been that kind of person. I have, this is personal observation. This is mm -hmm. not something, this is not hyperbole. This is personal observation. And, 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 and Mr. Daryl Powell, uh, a Tuskegee man. Um, <laughs> how, what can, what can I say other than this brother got the power, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, he got the Tuskegee airmen behind him, which, <laughs> and, and for those of you know, that I'm, I'm the marketing director for the friends of the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site Inc. as well. And so we are approaching Memorial Day. And so we give honor and homage to the men and women mm -hmm. of the Tuskegee Airmen. And for him to have those uh, that behind him uh, is, is, <laughs> is such a powerful message, man. Thank you. We love you so much, man. Thank you for your commitment to, the, to our young people. For all of those years, man, you have you've been there, right? And you have uh, nurtured them uh, with your wisdom. And so we are. We are so appreciative for that. Dr. T, um, what's, what, what we got to do is more of this, uh, you, you, you say, interdisciplinary conversation. Yes. yes. Right? Right? The, the, the academics got to get to the people who are working in the practical area. That's right. Right? Right? You know, we know that we have some people on. Uh, I want to acknowledge um, Katrina Randolph. Uh, who has been a part of of our for long for for my um, Michelle Lamb? Yeah, uh, thank you uh, so much for <laughs> uh, introducing me. Yeah, it's absolutely. Tell people about you, uh, Katrina. While while we are while we have hello a, everyone. A, for those of you who don't know me, I'm sorry I can't be on Facetime. Um, I have a daughter um, getting her prom fitting, but my name is Katrina Randolph. I'm the owner of Trey Shades Hair Studio in Capitol Heights, Maryland. I'm also part of the Hair Network with Dr. Stephen Thomas, and I'm also a certified community health worker through the state of Maryland. And she don't play. And she's I don't a play. wonderful person. And, she, she, she's, and Dr. T can say this. I can't say this. She's the short hair queen. <laughs> that's what they say that's what they say they say if you got short to no hair she's the person to go to <laughs> thank you for well, the introduction absolutely we love you so much and for all of you Likewise. who have joined us uh on uh, this cutting edge it's wonderful dr t i normally uh close it out but i'm gonna give you a few words to to close it out i do know that you all have had your commencement today and and for those people who graduated Soraya. Khan, who is uh, one of our own, uh, the behind the scene team, congratulations to you as well. Dr. T, you can have the last word. Well, you know, I'm always throw the ball back to you, Mary, but one of the things I observed tonight was how our, my new friends from, from, from Alabama shared their personal story. And Ms. Hicks, when you came out and shared your story of how you got teased after Miss Dorothy talked about that little kid. She called that her tearjerker. You opened up in a way and showed how you can take something negative and turn it into a positive. You didn't put it on your, on your license plate. I just love that. And so we saw some techniques here that, they're, that they have brought to the table because of the practice. And I would say we need those codified in a way that they're now part of the training of the next generation of health professionals. And I think the barbers and stylists have communication skills that that are expert and were you to watch them in action they would have implications for training mental health professionals to serve our community better and as you heard uh, one of our stylists is completing mental health first aid training there are a lot of trainings for lay people that we can bring into the barbershop training and increase the skill in the village and i think uh, mr mayor that's how this show can help make a difference well, I'm going to throw the ball back to you, Brum brother. You don't have to because it's uh, 730. And the only thing we can say from this point, from all of you, you know this, these two words, 
Remember that I love you with a perfect love. But more importantly, remember this, you got the power. Thank you for joining with us on this segment of The Cutting Edge. And we'll see you next week. Same time, same station. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. <laughs>